Back home now, as more and more Australians struggle to make ends meet, the Treasurer has unveiled his landmark intergenerational report, revealing how Australia will evolve over the next 40 years. Opposition leader Peter Dutton joins us now from Brisbane. Peter, good morning to you. You've got a lot morning to get to through um, today. But first, on this, Jim Chalmers saying the government's not contemplating changing the pension age, but wants to give older Aussies the option to work longer if they choose to. Do you support that? Well, we suggested, <coughs> excuse me, we suggested that last year uh, and Jim Chalmers dismissed it. Uh, of course, we want, if people choose to do so, uh, for them to be able to work more hours. Uh, there's demand in the economy for them. It's good, particularly given their electricity bills keep going up and their cost of living pressures keep mounting under this government. So uh, more flexibility uh, in the welfare system is a good thing. More encouragement for people to work uh, helps them. It helps the country. Hard to look 40 years into the future at the moment yeah. when there are so many issues in the here and now, though, right? Not just cost of living, but let's look at where you are in Queensland, the youth crime issue. The state mm -hmm. government now wanting to lock up youth offenders in watch houses indefinitely. Do you support that move? Well, Sylvia, the, the trouble is that there hasn't been the planning for uh, the corrective services system. So if they had uh, headroom problems or they didn't have capacity uh, within the youth detention centres, that they've known about that for years. Uh, and if they've now run out of space, well, it's a problem of uh, Premier Palaszczuk's own making. So she'll have to explain uh, why something that on the face of it is not acceptable uh, is something that, uh, that she's proposing. But again, uh, you look at the Prime Minister or Anastasia Palaszczuk, they, they talk this big game, but they never do anything. Mm. Uh, and ultimately, you end up with a crunch point, which is where uh, we are in Queensland. Uh, people leaving their keys by their front door because they're worried about uh, cars being stolen uh, kids coming through bedrooms of a night time, uh, rummaging through your bedside drawers, etc. It's just completely unacceptable and uh, it's all of their own making. There's a lot of fear in the community, but as a former police officer yourself, how do you feel about kids being locked up in adult prisons and watch houses? Well, the police won't want that either because uh, there's obviously a very significant supervision issue which uh, requires a lot of, uh, a lot of workforce um, hours and those hours then aren't spent on the street uh, preventing crime mm. from happening. And uh, I'm in the system here in Queensland around family services at a much earlier point uh, in, these, in the lives of these offenders uh, is completely broken as well. Uh, it, it's dysfunctional. It's not providing a deterrence. And now you're seeing kids, uh, particularly with social media feeds, uh, stealing cars and rummaging through houses uh, because, you know, they want the Insta fame. Mm. And uh, the government's just encouraging it because it's a revolving door system at the courts. Yeah, Queensland police have certainly already got their hands full, don't they? Yeah. Now, this time next week, Peter, we will finally know exactly when we'll be voting in the voice to parliament referendum. But you say the Electoral Commission has sparked confusion over how it will count ticks and crosses on the ballot paper. Is this a storm in a teacup, though? Can't voters just follow the instructions as they do at a general election? Well, Sylvia, so normally the, the approach uh, of the AEC is that if somebody's uh, intent is clear, um, then they acknowledge that uh, as, as a vote. But what we're seeing here uh, is quite a departure from that. And I just think Australians want to see a, a free vote, a fair vote in a democratic society. It doesn't matter whether you're a yes or a no. Uh, the question is uh, whether or not it's a fair process. The Prime Minister's withheld detail for months and months, which I think has made Australians angry and suspicious. Uh, and now we're seeing a process where a tick can count for a yes, but a cross won't count for a no. And just make it a fair process instead of trying to load uh, the system and, and trying to skew it in favour uh, of the yes vote. The Prime Minister would allow tax deductibility for donations to the yes campaign, but not to the no campaign. And I, I just think that sense of, uh, of equality in terms of the arguments and people's ability to, to make a decision uh, and for it to count um, and for there not to be a, you know, an effective gerrymander in place. I think that's all important so that people have, uh, you know, have uh, some respect of the process. But at the moment, uh, it's a real problem. Well, it sounds like a change may come on that front, so we'll watch that space. Yeah, Meantime, Qantas yesterday announced sky-high profits, almost 2.5 billion dollars. It's jaw-dropping. Meantime, the block on Qatar is continuing to raise eyebrows. Do you have any concerns, Peter, over the airline's perceived influence over the government? Well, Sylvia, so I've got real questions over the Qatar decision. Uh, we've heard no coherent reason from the government. Uh, if you've been re reading, <coughs> excuse me, reading Joe Aston uh, recently in, in the Fin Review, <laughs> I mean, it's quite remarkable. Uh, and there's been no decision 
given that, uh, that, that is logical and additional capacity in the system and that competition will bring downward pressure on prices. Anyone flying to Europe or Asia uh, or the Americas at the moment realises that uh, the, the prices are astronomical. So more competition and more flights on those routes will help. It's also huge, a huge benefit for inbound tourism where those additional people coming in on those flights are spending money with cafes and in restaurants at tourist destinations at a time when we need it, when the economy is starting to slow under this government. So uh, there are many reasons why the government should properly explain their decision, but at the moment uh, it's all over the place. In one word, Alan Joyce's legacy? Uh, it, it will be... Uh, I, I, look, I think to bring Qantas through the course of COVID, uh, as we saw with Virgin, uh, it was a tough period for those airlines uh, to be able to keep the company afloat during that period with the support of a lot of taxpayers' money. Uh, mm. uh, I think that will be, uh, you know, one thing that he chalks up. More than one word, but we will take it. Peter Dutton, oh, always sorry, appreciate you your time. Thank you. It's all Thank good. You. Thank you, Alan Joyce, coming up on the show a little later too. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?